everyone, I hope you're doing well, and of course Arnie does too. The pet trade is quite a controversial industry. When done responsibly, it can lead to you having a new pet and a friend for life. But when done irresponsibly, it can cause harm not just to the pets themselves, but also wild populations. When animals are seen as dollar signs, sometimes their health and welfare goes out the window. Some animals are overexploited for the pet trade, as large numbers are taken from the wild to satisfy the pet trade. But pet owners themselves can also be part of the problem, as when irresponsible pet owners release their pets into the wild, they can soon become invasive and threaten native wildlife. In some rare cases, popular pets can also be threatened in the wild, and in even rarer cases they can be close to extinction. And in today's video I'll be going through just a few of these threatened species, as I'll be going through five popular pets that are also threatened in the wild. And to start off with we'll be going over to Sri Lanka, as we have the cherry barb. Now the cherry barb is endemic to Sri Lanka, and is normally found in small clear streams in forested areas. These colourful fish only reach a maximum size of around 5 centimetres or 2 inches long. In their native habitat they normally feed on microfoods, such as small insects, crustaceans and zooplankton. The cherry barb has proven to be one of the most popular aquarium fish in the world, with there possibly being millions in people's homes. The cherry barb is a great beginner aquarium fish, both because of their size and the fact that they're very hardy and colourful. In the wild things don't look so great for the cherry barbs, as they're currently listed as vulnerable and their numbers are decreasing by the year. One of the main reasons behind their decline is the fact that they're so popular with fish keepers, as they've been illegally poached and collected for the aquarium trade, leaving few individuals in the wild. So if you ever find yourself looking for cherry barbs to keep yourself, always try to find tank bred individuals. This species also hasn't been helped by the fact that their habitat is decreasing, as the rich forests in which they're found in are being increasingly destroyed to create more farmland. This farmland also poses more problems for the cherry barbs, as pesticides and insecticides find their way into the water, which poisons most aquatic life. Hopefully more can be done in the future to protect these forests, not just for the cherry barbs, but for the vast array of wildlife that also lives there. So hopefully with a little help, these barbs won't only exist in aquariums. But for our next species we'll be heading to New Caledonia, as we have the crested gecko. These large geckos are arboreal, and spend the majority of their lives in low shrubs and small trees. In these habitats they feed on seeds, berries, insects, caterpillars and butterflies. New Caledonia seems like the best habitat for these geckos, as one of the few known predators of the crested gecko are fire ants. Crested geckos are among the largest of the gecko species, as they reach a maximum size of around 25 centimeters or 10 inches. One of their most distinctive features are the hair-like projections around their eyes. These resemble eyelashes, and these eyelashes have led to them having the nickname of the eyelash gecko. In the wild, the crested gecko is listed as vulnerable to extinction, but not too long ago this was a very different story, as for many decades this species was thought to be extinct, until a new population was found in 1994. Although there are populations still alive today, they are by no means out of the woods, as these geckos are not only under threat from wildfires, but also from invasive species, as the fire ants that happen to prey on these geckos were actually introduced into New Caledonia, along with other harmful species such as deer and pigs. These large mammals can destroy the gecko's habitat and lead to a sharp decline. Because of their peril in the wild, the export of wild geckos is prohibited, although it's still possible to find these guys in the pet trade. But hopefully with their new protection and conservation efforts, we'll be able to see greater numbers of this species in the wild. But for our next animal, we'll be heading over to Mexico, as we have the axolotl. This species was originally found only in a few lakes around Mexico City. These lakes are at a high altitude, and the axolotls are normally found at the edge of these lakes, or in shallower areas. Axolotls are very unique amphibians, as not only do they reach adulthood without undergoing metamorphosis, but they stay in the water their whole lives and keep their fluffy gills. Axolotls are also very important in scientific research, mainly due down to their ability to regenerate limbs, but this regenerating power goes a lot further than just their limbs, as they can also regenerate their gills, parts of their eyes and even their brains. In their native habitat they feed on meaty foods, such as worms, insects, crustaceans, mollusks and even some small fish. On this diet they're thought to reach a maximum size of around 45 centimetres or 18 inches. Although the axolotl is one of the most popular amphibians in the world when it comes to pets, they're currently listed as critically endangered in the wild, with only 50 to 1,000 adult individuals thought to be in the wild. One of the main reasons behind this is the increased urbanisation of Mexico City. The increase in people has led to an increase in water pollution, which is definitely a killer for the axolotls. As axolotls are known as indicator species, as they're normally only found in pristine waters, as they can't seem to deal with even small amounts of pollution. The axolotl is also another victim of invasive species, as fish such as tilapia and perch have been introduced into the lakes around Mexico City, and these fish will happily prey on the axolotls and their young. And if it carries on like this, the only axolotls alive on the planet will be found in aquariums. But for our next species, we'll be heading over to Africa, as we have the African grey parrot. This parrot is native to equatorial Africa, where it seems to prefer dense forests, as they produce a constant supply of food for these parrots. The African grey mainly 
mainly feeds on fruits, nuts and seeds, which means they're very heavily reliant on these forests. The African Grey has proven very popular with bird owners, mainly due down to the fact that they're one of the most intelligent animals in the world. They're thought to have the same intelligence as a toddler, and researchers also found that they're able to request, refuse and categorise around 80 different objects. The African Grey is also a very demanding pet to have, as if you purchase one, you could be looking after it for the rest of your life, as they live to an average of 60 years old, with some individuals even reaching 80. This means that they're often rehomed, which can be very stressful for the parrot. The African Grey is also a very social bird, and if its need for social interaction isn't met, they often become very stressed and can even display self-harming behaviour. Today, the African Grey Parrot is listed as endangered. Their popularity in the pet trade is one contributing factor, as up to 21% of the wild population is poached every year to supply the illegal wildlife trade. It's not just humans that these birds have to look out for, as monkeys are known to target their eggs, and they also fall prey to predatory birds, such as palm nut vultures. Also, the forests in which they're found in are also often felled for timber, and because of all these factors, they've been virtually eliminated from Ghana, and their numbers are decreasing over the rest of their territory. Because they are such a demanding pet, some individuals are thought to have been released into Florida. There's no evidence that this small population is breeding, so it really is a shame that one of the most intelligent and interesting birds is now endangered because of the greed of humans. But for our final species, we'll be heading over to China, as we have the White Cloud Mountain Minnow. Now, this tiny member of the carp family is native to the White Cloud Mountain in Guangtung, China. In this area, they're normally found in sluggish, spring-fed mountain streams with clear, shallow water. They are a very small species of fish, reaching maximum size of 4 centimeters or around 1.6 inches. Because of their size, they mainly feed on microfoods, such as algae and zooplankton. This species has proven to be very popular in the aquarium trade, mainly due down to the fact that they can tolerate cooler water, as they can be kept in aquariums without heaters and are a very hardy species. In the wild, this species doesn't currently have a conservation status, as there's not enough data on their population. But for years, it was believed to be extinct until a new population was discovered on Hainan Island. One of the main factors behind their decline is tourism, as the area in which they're found in is very popular with holidaymakers, with lots of hotels, highways and public parks. This increased number of people has led to increased pollution, turning the peaceful streams in which they're found in into polluted ditches. Although there are thought to be some healthy populations in Vietnam, it still doesn't look great for this species in the wild. The White Cloud Mountain Minnow is now protected, and hopefully we'll see more of these tiny fish in the wild in the years to come. But that's about it for this video. If you know of any other pets that are threatened in the wild, then let me know down in the comments below, and I might get around to making a part two. But thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed. If you liked it, please leave a like, and subscribe if you want to see more videos like these. But until next time, goodbye. <laughs>